Hello. Hi, Daniel. Well, it looks like it just might be you and me, Daniel. Yeah. I don't know what's going on there, but. Thank you for the uh, updates in that paper. Yeah, no problem. I, it was just there were some sentences that I really didn't like, so I wanted to change them. Sure. You will probably have noticed that I moved some things to uh, appendices, right? Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, like, especially the calibration part was pretty dense. Yeah, I mean, it's really good stuff. It was just like, I, you know, trying to think about the flow of when someone's trying to use this, where where do we have things that they, they should know about? Yeah, exactly. Hi, Secure. Good afternoon. Hey, Rick. How are you doing? Good, how are yourself? Thanks for all the effort in the OCP. Yeah, you bet. A lot of work, I know. <laughs> yeah, the good thing is it feels like we're nearing very, very close to the finish line. I guess I, I could uh, inundate us with uh, Olympic So, Okay, so uh, she needs to check all of... Her... I will move to a different room. I think there's a lot of background noise here. There's a little bit of background noise, yeah. Hi, Ari. Hi, Patrick. Hello. How are you all doing? We'll get going in just uh, about a minute here. Yeah, I joined. I joined the wrong link at first um, through the wiki. Uh, so we probably need to update the wiki to uh, to have the right link for this call. Oh, I didn't know that. I'll check it out. Thanks. I um I think uh, OCP took care of that, but it looks like maybe there's some things still 
missing. Yeah, I mean, I once I once I saw the uh, the email, then I, then I clicked on the right link, but I was on a different Zoom link, and it was just me. Um, <laughs> wow. Okay. All right. Um, hi, Kathy. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we yeah. can hear you. Thank you. All right. Um, let's go ahead and jump in. So I sent out the agenda earlier today. <clears throat> where I, Let me just start by saying thank you to everybody's efforts in reviewing, writing all the work the past two and almost two and a half years on this paper in the CAD. Um, we're, we're very nearly done. Um, and it's a really good feeling. Uh, the paper looks good, the CAD looks good. So um, just a few more updates and I think we're done. So where I wanted to start was to review authorship. Um, and if you all haven't checked out the latest page, I just wanna share my screen. Um, okay. All right, so here's who I've identified as the authors. So Sakir, Dave, uh, Daniel, and I, and uh, I, we've been continuing to moderate and edit this. Charlie has, I, I know, inputted and edited some things. I know Kathy has inputted. Bo, about a year and a half ago, made initial big steps on this. And I believe REU contributed to some of the writing also. Uh, so this is who, what I have for authorship. Um, is there anyone I'm missing to your all knowledge? I mean, I'm going to send this out to try to, to do as much diligence as I can to uh, over the next couple of weeks to make sure I've got the authorship completely uh, reflected. Um, but is there anybody else that anyone can think of? Okay. Um, well, of course, we can follow up after this too, if need be, on that. <clears throat> um, so I sent out earlier today the links to both the latest version of the paper uh, and to the CAD. Uh, so uh, everybody should have that now. Um, I don't know if you've had a chance to to um, try those out, but I assume that everybody who, who has looked at that has been regularly checking out the links and checking the paper out. So. Um, any other, any questions on the latest collateral or where to find it? No, I think your mail was really helpful. Um, and we will be sharing it internally here, here, here at Seagate. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, the next topic then was to go to discussion of usage of pro of the prototypes of the combined acoustic and vibration dynamics hard drive surrogate. Uh, so what that means is, you know, over the past year, in addition to efforts directly intended to help update the paper, um, you know, folks are using this in real time for their own projects. And uh, so we wanted to uh, reserve this time for discussion on that, any particular findings, any confusions, things that we want to kind of work, walk through, discuss as a team as we use this. And uh, if, you know, if someone were to find something absolutely uh, fundamentally um, challenging about the, pro about the uh, surrogate, we'd like to discuss that too. So I'd like to open the, the floor up to anybody who would like to bring up any cases that they'd like to discuss.
Uh, Ever, I think I will maybe discuss some part of it in the last uh, agent, last item on your agenda. Uh, okay. But in the meantime, I would be really curious to know uh, about the uh, the 3D printed connector. If anyone faced any particular issue with that. Hey Daniel, I'm going to defer to you. In our testing with that, did that pose any challenges? Uh, not that I can think of. Uh, yeah. Or at least nothing I've heard of. Yeah, working with our technician, he didn't seem to indicate any problems with it. So no, I think... and it looked, it looked fine. Okay, good to know. And uh, I think uh, I would like maybe Kathy. I think you had built your own connector, right? Uh, in in China, did you face any issue with that? No, it works well. Okay, perfect. That's excellent. I'm I'm glad to hear that. Okay, um, Patrick or Ari, I'm curious. And by the way, I'm not meaning to put you all on the spot. I'm just asking, have you all happened to have made, uh, um, have you made a combined acoustics and vibration surrogate uh, according to the what we've been discussing here the past couple of years? Uh, and if not, that's fine. Just wondering if you have and if you have any findings or observations. Uh, th this is Patrick with Toshiba. Uh, I do not know whether or not they have made an actual hardware implementation or not, but I know that they have examined in detail um, the design and the aspects, and I had sent some feedback uh, to the group around the June timeframe, uh, you know, with some comments. Uh, uh, from the engineers in Japan, and they had requested to me to see if I could locate the actual CAD files, which I was able to find, I think, the same link you sent out today uh, earlier and have sent that on to them. But uh, I have not heard an update since then whether they've actually gone ahead and actually built the prototype hardware aspect for that or not yet. Okay. Yeah, we're we're in somewhat of a similar situation. I I know that um at one point we had a prototype, it was an early one. Um I don't believe we've we've done anything since that time. Um but I'll be sending this out to to our, to our internal teams. Uh okay. And and you know my apologies for we we had quite a bit of churn here as as other companies have over mm -hmm. the past two years and um a lot of the names have changed. So so we're sure. uh, we're catching up. Okay. Yeah, but I've I've heard nothing you know negative. I mean, everything's been positive so far about the work that's been done. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Uh, anything else on um, findings or prototype usage? Anything else uh, anybody wants to bring up? Okay. Let's move on to the uh, last topic. And I see Zakir. Are you, are you still there, Zakir? Or your image is, is gone? I, I saw his hand. <laughs> there is a sighting. <laughs> yeah. um, so I'll, I'll just introduce the last topic. There has been interest from this team in being able to compare results uh, from the hard drive dynamic surrogate um, in a way to say, well, what are, are we getting, how repeatable are the results across different manufacturers, different labs, et cetera. And uh, the challenge has been, uh, you know, that collectively we don't necessarily have the same host chassis, um, you know, maybe not the same uh, acoustical or vibration exciting devices. So, um, Sakir and Dave were working on a method that could potentially be used as a round robin tester um, that we could send around to different members of the team, and each one of us could test with our 
uh, individually made prototype uh, hard drive surrogates. So, uh, and although they've come up with something, you know, we don't have to limit it to theirs. Someone else may have also, but let's let's go ahead and move to that part of the discussion, Zakir, if you uh, don't mind sharing where you are. Sure. And just to uh, refresh what you were, but it's, I think last time I showed this is the uh, the reference box I mentioned about. Sorry, I had to run to get my charger, so I might be breathing heavily. So, <laughs> yeah. right. so um, th this is the um, uh, WD NAS uh, box. It has two slots, and uh, we pretty much took the fan out from the existing box and put a um, sort of a server type fan on the back to get a similar spectrum. And uh, we put a knob in the front so you can adjust the fan speeds to different levels. So that's just a refresher. Uh, the size of the box is roughly eight inch by six inch by four inch. And uh, so for this box, uh, uh, so we, I went through some iterations, checking the repeatability. So the final version, which I think works best, is currently this box comes with a tab on the back. It's a spring-loaded tab. And the door in the front basically has a grommet. So it basically pushes against this tab and latches in place. And this was giving a lot of variability in the measurements. So the final version, I took this tab out. So it's no more spring-loaded tab. It just goes and connects directly to the, the back plane, the board. So connector just goes into the back plane in the back here. So no, no spring loading. And then I checked two versions. One is with this door closing versus the door being open. So I'll look at the data here. So uh, there's a reference. A slot S1 closed versus open. And uh, I began the analysis by looking at the RMS, overall RMS. But later I will discuss why I think RMS may not be the best choice. Uh, it can open for discussion. Uh, but as an analysis tool, RMS was very fast to just see the numbers and see how repeatable they are mm. instead of going, going into spectrums. So this is a faster way, so I looked into that first. And from this overall RMS, at least, the, the both looked, actually, to me, uh, reasonable. Uh, pretty, this, yeah, pretty similar. Yes. There are four runs each. And uh, the slot, the open one actually looked better to me in terms of repeatability. In the next... I'm, I'm sorry, really quickly, sure. to orient myself, the rows, uh, what do the rows going down mean? Do those mean? Okay. Yeah, good, good one. Let me go over it. The, on the top, we have the mic one, mic two, and then you have the linear vibe, WLZ, yep. and rotational vibe, WLZ. Yep. Okay. And going down, we have a different levels of the knob. So knob is at oh, okay. number two, number three, number four, number five, number six. Okay. And there are four repeat of each level. Okay, got you. And I'm plotting the average of those as well in the shaded row. Okay. Okay, so um, so this was my first criteria to check the repeatability and looking at other iterations, this seemed to be more reasonable. But then but I will... the, the, Go ahead. The, the knob is referring to um, fan speed uh, through the, through the uh, system. Exactly. Yeah, so okay. we have the knob in the front here somewhere. Uh, yeah, so it's connected to the fan, so we can just use this to change the speed. I don't have an RPM. I can take the data later on. Uh, I don't have the RPM of the fan at this point for each knob. So uh, I will, for now, I will exclude 
the H2 discussion. This is a slot two where we did not tamper with anything. It still has the spring loaded tab and the, and the door closing. Okay. Um, and this is the data by itself, just looking at the numbers only. Uh, that mic, uh, this here we have the top mic going through level two, three, four, five, six, uh, and the, all the repeat data in the box plot. And uh, this is the uh, uh, the linear vibe, the rotational vibe, mic one, mic two, W, L, Z, W, L, Z. First condition when the S1 was closed, second condition when the, the door was open, third condition mm -hmm. where S2. Gotcha. Okay. Did you happen to collect one third octave band for acoustics? Yeah, I mean, I can, I can get the data, I have the data. Here I'm okay. just putting the overall. Is it recordings? Got it. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we do have the data. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, overall levels looks pretty tight for the SPL. Uh, as you can see in the vibration, there is some variation. And I believe maybe level five has some sort of resonance. We can see a lot more variation in five, six. In general, up to four, I saw some good uh, repeatability. The interesting thing to keep in mind, and I want to say this so everybody hears it, um, there's the surrogate, which is what we delivered in phase two of this uh, work group. So that's the main thing. What's interesting about having, of course, a, a, a test fixture like this is that um, <laughs> now, now you wonder, is it the test fixture that has its own characteristics or is it the, the surrogate, which we hope is um, repeatable so yeah it, it introduces some questions there but but I, I guess what you're getting to is trying to ascertain uh, whether this type of uh, test fixture might be helpful in um, different labs uh, looking at their surrogate and comparing yes yeah I think uh I mean, one good outcome could be that at least uh, we know that everyone is implementing the script the right way. Um, at least if you have a reference uh, number to check. Yeah, <clears throat> because certainly any resonances inside the test fixture, those are intrinsically um, going to have a variation. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So next level, I was looking into the spectrum. I don't, I haven't looked at all the spectrum, but I will share a few. So here we just looking at, we're looking at the slot one closed and level two and uh, the four data repeated. And uh, as you can see, although the spectrum looks pretty close here, just one little thing here can totally offset the, the RMS values. Mm -hmm. And that's why I came to, I mean, RMS is a good, maybe if easy to check quickly, but maybe it is um, uh, uh, not, not the best parameter. Uh, uh, so in general, as you can see, it's pretty repeatable in almost the whole frequency. I'm not sure what contributed to just this little difference in the low frequencies. And uh, I'll share the data we took between the two sites and there's more variation then. And uh, uh, my initial guess was if we look at maybe 200, our surrogate is supposed to be good up to three kilohertz. If you look at this range, maybe I will be computing the RMS in this range. That might be a good parameter to check eventually. But I think for all labs, spectrum might be difficult to check uh, always, but if we have a number for this range, that might be easy to engage against. Right. <clears throat> right. So again, uh, linear X, all the plots will follow the similar template, uh, linear X, Y, Z, and the rotational X, Y, Z. Uh, for now, please ignore the, uh, uh, the WD spec, which I will take off. Uh, it's a publicly available information anyway, but uh, for comparison sake, we don't really, really don't need that uh, spec. So uh, when one, one data has an issue, means all the 
go through all the linear and rotational um, for that particular data point. And this is level three, uh, where th there seems to be more consistency. Um, again, if I focus on the two to three kilohertz, um, there's a better, uh, I mean, at least for the round robin, if you're checking from chem from different facilities, might be uh, better to focus on a particular range. Uh, I'm not sure where this particular peak is coming from. This might be, uh, the, the, yeah, it, it is the fan tone because I see it moving uh, with, with different speeds. So it is the fundamental fan tone, which mm. is, uh, yeah. Yeah, and uh, yeah. low frequencies can be, can be challenging, particularly with the uh, mounting scheme used. That, that'll be interesting, by the way, um, presuming a device like this is shipped around from lab to lab is you know, is quite honestly unpacking the, the, the thing and seeing what we get. So, right. Yeah. So as you can see, as they go through different levels, that peak will be shifting to the right. So, sure. yep. and uh, level six, I think has other resonances coming in as well. Uh, it's a little bit higher levels in the noise. And as you can see, even the, uh, the rotational is reaching pretty high levels, which you normally don't see. Uh, this is sort of the WD spec uh, uh, 12.5. It's much exceeding the spec. So I think for even for round robin, we may limit uh, what levels to check, I think. I I don't know if that's necessary. I mean, these are just data. Keep in yeah. mind, it's, it's not about... Uh, the idea of a round robin is not about actual thresholds. It's more about observations to see how a test device works if we had any concerns about damage but i don't think there's any any concerns about uh damage to anything here that would though that would be reason to limit it but do you have any concerns about like running the fan too fast and that uh causing issues for the fixture no i'm looking there uh no i mean the the spl level is uh reasonable up to six yeah about 108 range yeah, it'll sound so, fun for everybody. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and uh, next topic is actually I am yet to look at the same plot for the open case with the with the slot being open. I I'm I'm expecting that to have better repeatability, uh, but I'll I'll report that later. So next topic is I have just one plot to show between here and what Dave needs tested in. Um, oh right. In uh, in um, uh, Colorado. Right. So here I, I plotted this only data I have here. I have, I have the data, I haven't plotted them yet. So this is for a closed case with level four. Uh, there are four data points from uh, the San Jose data and I put only one trial at the, uh, at the uh, uh, Colorado in, in gray. So that's how it looks right now as a, yes, to check ballpark how things look. Uh, So, um, do you, me, do you yeah. see anything that could be attributed to altitude? You know, Colorado to San Jose is, is quite a difference. Yeah, I know altitude will have more impact on the sound pressure level. Actually, it's a good point. Uh, I'll, I'll show you here. Um, so here I have a summary of the of all the data. The uh, San Jose on the top, the bottom one is the Colorado. Uh, uh, the first two columns are the sound pressure level. So sound pressure level immediately looked uh, at least uh, relatable. And I think consistently I see about one dB less in Colorado. So uh, I'm not sure, I have to check the altitude difference and stuff, uh, but uh, uh, at least a trend follows for the acoustics uh, between the two sides. For uh, the vibrate, yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah. I mean, the microphones are plus or minus one dB, I believe, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that, I mean, that, I don't, we can't draw any conclusions. Yeah, perhaps not. Yeah. yeah. Now, for the vibration, initially I was at a loss because there was no correlation at all on the RMS values. Uh, it, uh, it was like totally looking at totally different data. Uh, and uh, looking at the overall levels. Like you can see some of the, just to give an example here on the uh, level uh, uh, level five in, 
in uh, Colorado oh, wow. coming. Yeah. yeah. So, and even overall, many of the data had no correlation at all on the overall levels. So, uh, but when I looked at a spectrum, at least I see some trend of comparison. Um, so, uh, I, I see that the tones at least are right on top. So that means the fan speeds are correct. So if this is a fundamental tone, I think seems they are right on top. I can go into higher resolution to see, but it seems uh, pretty close. Uh, yeah, and uh, I would actually take the RMS maybe from 200 to two kilohertz, when, uh, actually 200 to three kilohertz, which is our um, uh, limit for the, um, upper limit for the surrogate and yeah. see how the RMS values actually compare in that range. I, a, um, Secure, I'm going to postulate that the difference is more likely to be attributable to low frequency content. <clears throat> Just because you can have a lot of energy at low frequency that uh, that shifts uh, RMS. I, 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 I don't know. I guess also because we're looking at a logarithmic plot on the y-axis, it could be that there's more energy than appears. Um, sometimes it's hard to see a uh, logarithmic on the y-axis. Right. So it could be, for example, I'm absolutely just speculating here, but uh, the, is it that the gray is the um, one yeah. of the test labs and the black is another test lab? Yeah, so first, uh, all the thin lines are pretty much the one that was done in San Jose, the four lines. Okay. And the black I would is the spec, which I would remove. And the gray, thick gray is, is that one data point from Colorado. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I interesting. Again, the challenge in having both a surrogate that we're that's the thing we're trying to test. Yes. <clears throat> and also a fixture is we're not sure <laughs> which one is is moving. Um, yeah. So uh, I think we have the data from the both sides. Uh, I, 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 Dave Nis is not here, I think. Uh, I'm not sure if he has any other plans. Uh, I think it will be okay to ship that uh, box to another site if anybody would like to volunteer. Is there someone who would like to look at this? I guess it presumes that a um, a prototype surrogate exists. So um, I think some of us don't have a, or I, we do, but others don't necessarily have a prototype surrogate. Um, yeah, I, I, Daniel, I, I mean, I don't want to monopolize the time on this, but I would like to to look at that. Yeah. Uh check with the lab and we can see if we have the space for it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, unless yeah. Uh, Kathy or, or Jennifer wish to look at it first, um, I think we'd like to, to try to uh, test it out. Oh, but I think uh, it's difficult to bring it to China. I was okay. going to say that the last time I had difficulty even sending one small part to China actually. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, Daniel, if you would uh, maybe, you know, if you find it is okay, you can send me the address and maybe the uh, contact email and phone number, then I can, uh, uh, we can send it out once confirmed. I'll get that for you, Secure. I, I've got the direct contact, so yeah, I'll get that too. Okay, and in the meantime, I will finish uh, analyzing the rest of the data and maybe send out a report. Uh, this doesn't. This is not part of the uh, the phase two uh, paper or any other documents. So I think this is a sort of a confirmation uh, project we're doing. Uh, That's right. It's a separate, sep its own separate scope. We can discuss later if this takes on its own a life of its own. Um, yeah. Uh, Zakir and Dave, um, who's not here tonight, but thank you very much for running those tests um, and, and reporting those. Welcome.
Does anyone have any comments or or thoughts that they want to share about uh, what the data Zakir just uh, showed? Um, actually, go ahead. Sorry, yeah, uh, I just don't understand the the difference between the first and the third uh, case. Um, yeah. So can you, can you help me? Maybe you can repeat uh, the seven. Uh, where did you say that? The page seven? Oh, page seven, okay. Uh, yeah, where did you explain the three cases? Yeah, I'm sorry. I think I lost my mouse somewhere. <laughs> I cannot find my cursor, I'm sorry. Um, let me go. Uh, Okay, I can see that. Okay, seven. Okay, is this a slide? Yes. Oh no. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Page seven. But uh what is case three? Um, oh. Okay. Case three is. Uh, okay. So case one. Uh, so this box has two slots. I call one S one and S2, uh, actually maybe this picture is, uh, what is the picture, this one. So this is a box, it has, uh, do you see this, uh, Cathy? Yes. Yeah, so this box has two slots, I call it S1 and S2. In yes. S1, I pretty much remove the back tab that was pushing against the drive, mm. okay? And so in, yeah. in S1 case, I checked the uh, for first case is S1, the door being closed. Mm. And next one is the same slot, but I keep the door open. Mm. Uh, because I'm, I'm re removing the variability of how hard the, the latch presses against the drive. And it is just a, um, pushing the drive as far as it goes into the board. Yes. And the third case is, uh, checking on the S2, which is uh, uh, untouched. That means it has, it has two variables. One is the spring-loaded tab, which you're pushing against while putting the drive in, as well as the door closing on the, on the box. Uh, so, but but it, it seems the same. On the first and the third picture looks the same. What's the different I? I oh. don't see that. Yeah, in the first case, the, the drive is in slot S1. In the third case, the drive is in S2. The drive? The, uh, so, the, no, sorry, I'm, the, I'm sorry, the surrogate, not the drive. The, the surrogate is yeah. in slot. Okay, so it, so it shows the difference between the two slots. Yes. Um, so, uh, so what uh, so what will be the situation that you prefer to um, to do the standardize uh, standardization? Yeah. The, the so, first case or the third? Yeah, my guess is the best scenario is going to be the second case. The best, okay. <laughs> uh, with no without latch, without, without the latch to pull it uh, inside. Yes, just yes, pushing the drive inside as far as it goes into the back plane. Mm. So uh, the, the only connection between the surrogate and the box is the connector, right? Exactly. The dummy connector, okay. Yes. Yeah, uh, I mean, for our case, for the two sides between San Jose and Colorado, actually, I, we tested both, the, the number one and number two. We are ignoring number three completely, the number one, number two. Uh, now, based on other sites, you know, availability of, you know, doing this test, if they can, if we, I would you know, like if they, if they can do both, but I think uh, at least uh, maybe the case too. Okay. So, so um, the following pages where you show the difference between uh, Daniel's result and your result, uh, is based on the second uh, second uh, way of a fixture. Yeah, the plots I showed actually, I started with case one. 
So the plots I showed is for case one only, which is the, the plot closed. Case one only. Okay, yeah. so you need to you need to do that again in in Dell with the second with the door open, and uh, you you expect a better respect uh repeatability. Yeah, yeah. just to, uh Dell we haven't done a Dell yet. Uh, we only did between San Jose Western Digital and Colorado Dave Nice uh, uh, Western Digital. And I have the data for both. I have the data for both uh, the top first case and the second case. I have not just analyzed them yet or plotted them yet. Um, sorry, Colorado is a city, right? Uh, um, no, there's two different WD facilities. Oh, oh, understood. Yeah, understood. Okay, that's clear for me. Thank you. Yeah, it, it, the reason is they are using different um, different analyzer, different lab, different person setting up doing the test. So uh, yeah, it just uh, those are the differences. Okay, thank you, Kathy. <clears throat> Any other thoughts or questions from anybody else? I, I just have a high level question, which is, sure. you know, what did anything here surprise you, Sakir? Anything were any of your results unexpected or surprising to you? Uh, not right now. Uh, it did throw me off when I saw the RMS comp not correlating at all. Uh, when I looked at this data, uh, what was it? This was pretty surprising that I saw the overall RMS not, I mean, I couldn't make out which is what, uh, but looking at a spectrum, I think uh, it uh, it uh, it looks okay visually, but as uh, uh, Everett suggested, I think I have to, uh, there might be more because it's a logarithm, logarithmic scale, it's not uh, maybe visually as accurate as, uh, uh, or I, I'm, not, I'm you know, not that intuitive, I think. So maybe after pu putting the RMS numbers to it, we'll get an idea, you know, uh, how, the, how they vary between the two sides. Yeah, and keep in mind again, Ari, um, so this is kind of an extra credit <laughs> project yeah, yeah. to yeah. look at a, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, meaning I, I'm, I'm kind of cautious with, uh, with the data because I don't want it to imply that the surrogate isn't doing what it's supposed to do. It might very well be doing what it's supposed to do and it's saying, hey, this test fixture is, is, has changed somehow. Uh, it's the problem of changing two or, or looking at two different variables. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll, as we send it around, we'll have to determine if there's a way to discern which is attributable to the surrogate and which is attributable to the test fixture. I don't yeah. know how to do that at the moment, um, but I don't think that should preclude us from uh, starting around Robin and then at least beginning to uh, extract some differences. Okay, uh, excellent. So I, we've completed the agenda today. Um, I've taken notes. Um, Zakir, I'm going to send the notes to you first just so you can check to see if I missed anything. And if I haven't, then if you don't mind sending out to the group, I will follow up with you, Zakir, and send you an address for the test fixture. Um, and then, uh, as I covered at the beginning, um, we just have a few clerical updates to make in the paper. Uh, and I'm going to confirm the authorship with each of the folks. Uh, for example, I haven't spoken with Bo in a while, but I just want to make sure that he didn't have a limitation on uh, the authorship there. Um, and then I believe we'll be able to submit this um, next week or the week after that, uh, both the CAD and the paper. Yeah. And if we are able to accomplish that, then we'll con conclude phase two. I would like to still plan to meet in September. Um, 
pre presumably to debrief, uh, discuss what happens next, etc. Uh, but in the meantime, I would encourage everybody on the call to proceed to uh, discuss among ourselves. Uh, you know, for example, Ari or Patrick, as you're discussing with your teams, and um, you know, if they've got questions about the surrogate or anything that we've done here, please do reach out. I mean, the entire intent is to uh, help the industry with a common tool and common communication scheme. So we want this to, you know, we want these things to be used. So this will be a, a contribution and you'll go to the steering committee and get voted on the normal process. Is that? Yeah, correct. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it's uh we're calling it a 1.0. Um, a version zero. Yeah. It's not a spec. It's a paper. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So do we, do we expect an evolution of the paper over time? I guess is, is my question. Uh, to be quite frank with you, I do mm -hmm. not anticipate that. Okay. Here's the reason why. Um, it just takes so long to to, to gain uh, uh, the contributions and, and buy in to the direction that it, I just, uh, I, I feel that that would be setting ourselves up for another long-term thing uh, project without necessarily a uh, a closure date, and I think we need to have a reference point. Now that said, I should, uh, I, I can't recall if you were in a previous meeting, but uh, Charlie Oppenheimer did present that ECMA is working with OCP to uh, work on a standard around this area. So in that case, that hmm. truly, that obviously wouldn't be immediate, but yeah. uh, at a certain point, the objective would be a standard related to um, hard drive dynamics measurement. Okay, that's, I, I wasn't in that meeting. That is interesting to me. Uh, and, you know, I, I agree with you on the, the time consuming process. That's why we see more um, implementations being introduced by small groups of companies. Um, I'm thinking more like around security, for example. Right. Um, and, and I understand and sympathize with the frustration. And Mike Allison has been helping um, with the OCP uh, process to make sure that other companies can get um, earlier previews of such implementations um, and not not contaminate IP. Um, so so kudos to Mike there. I think I think I think his uh, proposal was just just accepted recently and adopted. Cool. Uh, so that's that's another path. Um, moving forward, I mean, there's we're we're a small group of companies here, so yeah, um, there, there are ways to move more nimbly. Yeah, for sure. Thank you for that. Yep. Okay. Anything uh, from anybody else? Okay. Well, then uh, let's close the meeting. I want to thank everybody for their time, and as I said, let's uh, keep the September meeting on the calendar uh, to meet up, and we'll. Uh, 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 meet and discuss where we are at that point. Uh, if we're really fortunate, maybe we will have run some round robin tests at my company. We'll see if we get that far as secure though. But if we do, we can present those data. Okay. Thank you all you, have Robert. a good day and evening. Thank you very much. All right, bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Everett. Uh, Everett is, has gone. It's okay. So. Yes, uh, I was going to. I was going to mention um, um, uh, Everett about the uh, meeting. Um, I wasn't sure if you intended uh, for a larger audience or just uh, me and Everett. So I didn't say it. Uh, let oh. me see if I can contact. Um, yes. <laughs> I think Daniel's still here. Daniel, do you hear us? I guess no. <laughs> so you, uh, you you don't have a personal contact with Everett? <laughs> uh, let me check. I may have his number. Uh, let me see. Yeah.
Yeah, I do have it. Let me send him in a text. Let me also send him an email in case he checks email more. Okay. Okay, I send him a text and an email. So let's give him a few minutes. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, do, do you have, uh, uh, so it, is it accepted that you stay longer about uh, for about half an hour? Uh, yes, yes, uh, I'm okay. Um, I thought it's easier for me to stay back on this meeting than to make a new meeting. Yes. So, um, let's see. Uh, yeah, actually, my time is not bad because it's only getting to 5 p.m. right now. Uh, for Everett, it's probably 7 p.m. Oh. Yeah, he's in the central time zone, two hours ahead of me. Oh, okay. Yeah, Hope so, uh, but I think he just forgot probably. <laughs> so I think he mentioned he'll be attending. <laughs> okay, the worst situation is... Is having the, the dinner. Yeah. So um, we can give it maybe another two minutes. If not, we can maybe reschedule. Uh, um, yeah. um, or we can uh, make it by our two um, first. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, because because I I need to submit the material by this week. Ah, okay, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Um... Okay, he did apply. Great oh, yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He... <laughs> yeah, he actually responded. Uh, he was wondering because he's going to be recorded. So, uh... yeah, so all OCP meetings are, are recorded. Is that is, um, I mean, this will be a recorded session, but if it's it's all public OCP, then. <laughs> What will occur is it'll show up as uh, anybody in the world can search on it and, and listen to this uh, discussion. So if that's all right with you, I'm I'm fine with uh, proceeding. I'll leave oh. it up to you, Kathy. So uh, so this meeting is, is still being recorded right now. Yeah, o OCP. That's that's the OCP policy. There's no way oh. I, I can't I can't control that. Oh, so oh, what do you recommend? Uh, recommend uh, shall we? Uh, log out and uh, log in another meeting? It, it's up to you. If what you're discussing is public information, then it's fine, Evan. And it, it, it just means it'll be confusing for anybody who, <laughs> who uh, logs into this meeting. I mean, who um, listens to this recording. That's all. Um, so, um, so 
I, I think it would better make another meeting. Okay, fine. Okay. Uh, just send it to Zakir and me, and we'll we'll join. Yes. Up. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so, Kathy, are you going to make it have a Zoom or some something else? Uh, yes, I have a Zoom. Yeah. Okay. We, perfect. We are That's now great. in a Zoom. Yeah. Okay. That sounds good. Thanks. Thank okay, you. I will leave now. See you later.